Hey, you're listening to episode 163 of the Keto Diet Podcast. And today we're chatting all about how to adjust your ketogenic diet to match your cycle. We're going to be chatting about menopause, amenorrhea, hormone imbalances, and so much more. When I discovered that I could adjust my ketogenic diet to match my cycle, man, that was a great day. I mean, it wasn't really a day. It just kind of like happened over time. And I'm like, wait a minute there's like a pattern here. And then I went back to the drawing board and I drafted it all up and made, you know, charts and (laughs) tables and calendars. And then I did a bunch of research on the cycle and what nutrients are required during the cycle. And I'm like, wait, shut the front door. I'm intuitive eating to what science tells me I should be eating at various times in my cycle. Mind blown. So then I, um, put this information in my cookbook, the Keto Diet Cookbook. I've been sharing it in Happy Keto Body, my 12-week video training program for the ladies. I also um, put it in my book, Keto for Women, that just released yesterday, oh my goodness, and sharing how we can adjust our ketogenic diet to support our cycle with the various imbalances that we have. And the more I learn about this and the more you guys tell me information about how you're adjusting, it just like, it blows me away. And this is such exciting stuff. If you have questions about today's content, you can go to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can also catch up on previous podcast episodes and notes from today's show by going to ketodietpodcast.com. I got a couple cool things for you today and I just mentioned it briefly, but I'm going to mention it again. My paperback book, Keto for Women, just launched yesterday. It has been a whirlwind of a book writing process. I'm so, so happy it's out there, but now's the time for like, brace yourself. Oh gosh, I hope people like this. I put everything into this. And if you already have a copy in your hand or you've pre-ordered one, or you're gonna go grab one at a bookstore, please, please, please take a moment to leave a review. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. I don't care if it's somewhere in the middle just leave a review. It helps me understand what you like, what you don't like, so that I can adjust things. And it also helps other people find the book, align themselves with the book. And also I'm doing something really, really fun. And I don't think that I've shared this with you guys yet on the podcast. And this has been my dream, but I've never had the budget to do it or like the ability to do something like this. So when you share a selfie with you in the book from now until August 20th, and you use the hashtag keto for women on social, you'll be entered to win a thousand dollars for Amazon. And now this is open to all people everywhere. And each and every single share, every time you use the hashtag keto for women, I'm going to donate 25 cents to upwithwomen.org to a max of a thousand dollars. Up With Women is dedicated to helping recently homeless and at-risk women to rebuild their lives. The cycle of homelessness and poverty can be extraordinarily difficult to escape, and Up With Women gives the skills and opportunities to break the cycle. Now, this just means so much to me that not only can I gift somebody $1,000 to buy awesome things on Amazon, maybe extra books or resources or food or whatever they want, but to also give back to our community to support women that are struggling and want to rebuild their lives, but just can't. And Up With Women is such a great organization. I'm so happy that we're doing this. So if you have a copy of Keto For Women or you have friends that have a copy or you just like see it at a bookstore, even if you don't buy a copy, take a selfie, use hashtag Keto For Women and we will start donating. Also, if you are in need of more support and you would like to see me in more videos and all the things, I am doing a virtual book tour right now. You guys can watch a bunch of the recordings over on YouTube. I've included a link in today's show notes, which you can get at Keto Diet Podcast under episode 163, where you can watch all the recordings I read from various books. I've answered questions. It's a really fun time. So that's a resource for you. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code Keto Podcast. That's all one word. This 30-day program gives you a clear step-by-step how-to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. 
go to healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of happyketobody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Today's recording is actually from one of my virtual book reading events that's been happening since the beginning of April. And this was celebrating the Keto Diet Cookbook, Keto for Women. I was answering questions, reading from books. We had a great time. And I wanted to share the one where I really got into depth about how to adjust keto for hormones. So throughout this episode, you're going to hear me say like, look at this page and look at that page. If you want to follow along and you already have the book, great. I definitely add a bunch more into it as I'm reading. And if you don't have the book and you want to watch the video, I've included a link in today's show notes so you can watch the video along and have a good feel for really how to adjust keto to fit your hormones is a really great template to get you started. So let's cut over to this recording. Amazing. Good morning, everyone. How great is this? Hey YouTube, hey Instagram, <laughs> two birds, one stone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday morning. Everything's going well with you guys. Today is the second day that my book, The Keto Diet Cookbook, is on shelves at bookstores everywhere. And many of you guys have been asking me if I'm going to be going on tour. And the answer is kind of. I'll be doing virtual tours from now until the end of June. So I'm very excited to be able to connect with all of you and be able to chat with many of you on the interwebs and connect with so, so many of you this way as opposed to in a face-to-face -face setting. Unfortunately, I just, I realized that I couldn't see as many people as I wanted to and work has been so busy and my newest book, Keto for Women, is coming out in a couple of months and I just couldn't make it all work together. So I feel like this is so much better to be able to chat with each and every one of you on here. Now, if you have questions while I'm reading from the cookbook, feel free to add them to the comments below, whether you're on Instagram here or YouTube there. And and I will answer them after I read. And also, I need to say good morning to y'all. Hey, good morning, Sarah. From, uh, good evening from Australia. Good afternoon from Portugal. Hey, Becky. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah, new book. It's happening. Good morning. Hello from Middle England. See, this is what I mean. There's no, no way that I could connect with people from Australia and England and things had I done a North American book tour. So I'm very excited to connect with you guys, answer your keto questions, and also read from the book. How exciting is this? Back to today's episode in a sec. Did you know it's possible to enjoy a glass or two of wine and stay in ketosis? Yeah, that's right. Dry Farm Wines is the first wine club that sources wines with zero sugar, so you can drink your wine and not compromise your ketones. Plus, Dry Farm Wines curates only the highest quality natural wines from small, sustainable family farms. Their wines are organic, dry farmed, and naturally low in alcohol with zero additives and zero carbs. Listeners of the podcast can add an extra bottle of wine to their first Dry Farm Wines order for just one one penny. Sign up for your first case now by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash wine. Unsure of the link? Simply check out the show notes of today's episode to get all the details. Okay, back to today's episode. Okay, cool. Let's get started. I wanted to chat with you guys about hormones today, how to sync up your keto with your hormones. So if you're having issues with hormones or maybe you're, ha you're struggling with your hormones, or maybe you're having symptoms and you don't know what's happening. I wanted to chat with you guys all about hormones. Now I'm reading again from my book, The Keto Diet Cookbook. It's out now. You guys can find out more details by going to ketodietbook.com or just go to a local bookstore and they should have it. And if they don't, you can ask them to carry it or at least order you a copy. Okay, enough blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about hormones, yeah? Okay, so I'm reading, if you have the book, you can follow along. How fun is that? I'm reading from page 24 of the Keto Diet Cookbook. 
and I'll kind of show you what this page looks like. I'll show you two people first, and then I'll show you guys. Over here, I show you kind of uh, the moon cycles and how to align your uh, menstrual cycle with the moon, which if you're not taking hormonal birth control, you should already be cycled up with the moon just naturally. And if you're not, there are steps that you can take to really align yourself with that. And you'll find that your hormones just feel a lot better and balance a lot better, at least for myself personally. And then I go through what progesterone's doing through your cycle, what estrogen's doing through your cycle, and then a, a bunch of, it's hard for me to read this upside down and backwards, <laughs> a bunch of different ways to balance your macros depending on your health imbalance or rather hormone related health imbalance, okay? So let's do this. If you're experiencing a monthly menstrual cycle, you're at an age where a monthly cycle is expected of your body. Understanding the hormones that influence your cycle is key to understanding hormone imbalance and how a ketogenic diet can help correct this imbalance. With a slight tweak to your macronutrient ratios, you can support the ebb and flow of the two main hormones responsible for balancing your menstrual cycle, estrogen and progesterone. Now, if you don't have a cycle due to a condition called amenorrhea, this information applies to you as well. Your body still might go through the hormonal ebb and flow, but that ebb and flow is not strong enough to produce menstruation. If you're unsure of where you're at in your cycle, use the phases of the moon as a guide. A full moon can signify ovulation. When is the next full moon? Count backwards 14 days from that date and pick that day as the first day of your next cycle. So this is something that I did when I had amenorrhea. I just looked at the, you can go on the Google machine and type in moon cycles in your area and you can see exactly when the full moon is, when the new moon is, and then that full moon is your ovulation, even though you might not ovulate yet. And then count 14 days backward from that day. And then that's your first day of your period. And that's what you're just gonna treat as the first day of your period even though you have no idea, or rather the first day of your cycle, I should say, which is the first day of your period. Okay, so estrogen, what's the role of estrogen? It matures an egg before ovulation. This is why you see an estrogen increase just before ovulation. Additionally, it matures the uterine lining that is shed when a period takes place, which is why the level increases again in the luteal phase. So here are some signs of excess estrogen bloating, decreased sex drive, mood swings, headaches, acne, and PMS. Signs of decreased estrogen include painful intercourse, depression, hot flashes, mood swings, irregular periods, increased instances of UTIs. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. Then we have progesterone, and this is one of those hormones that if you have enough, you are happy and amazing, and if you don't, it really sucks. I personally supplement with progesterone because my body, even though I have overcome amenorrhea, still needs just a little touch of progesterone every month, and I take it between cycle days 12 to 24 to just help my body feel its best Otherwise, I just don't feel awesome. A progesterone works to balance out the effects of estrogen during the maturation of the uterine lining in the luteal phase. This is why it increases during the estrogen increase. So think of progesterone and estrogen as being like a teeter-totter thing. So when estrogen increase, increases, progesterone increases, just to kind of level it out a little bit. And what we see in estrogen dominance sometimes is that Women will be so high in estrogen that the progesterone just can't keep up and we start to feel like not so awesome. Okay, so you're probably wondering like, how can I adjust my ketogenic diet to match my cycle and how should I be eating during my cycle? Or maybe you've never even thought about the fact that you can do this, where you can adjust your ketogenic diet throughout your cycle to support your hormones because it doesn't really make sense that women, specifically women who are menstruating, would eat the same diet every day because 
your body needs something different on cycle day one than it does on day six, that it does on day 17. So let's go through each of the cycle sections and I can show you what I mean. So the title says changing your macros with your cycle. The following macro adjustments assume that your period lasts for five days. You ovulate on the 14th day of your cycle and your full menstrual cycle is 28 days. If your body is different, you will need to adjust the following to suit your pattern. Okay, so Cycle day is one to five. So if your period is longer than five days, then you would say cycle day one to six or one to seven or one to eight or however long your period lasts is how long you eat this way. During your period, your body may respond best to a higher protein intake, higher protein. So this is where the carnivore style of eating for women is really, really awesome. Between cycle days one to generally five, or just think whenever you're menstruating, that's when you're eating more of a carnivore based diet. So lots and lots of protein, a good amount of fat and a minimal carbohydrate. Then we have cycle days six to 11. This is the first day after your period until two days before ovulation. So if you ovulate on the 15th day or the 17th day, that'll change your personal cycle days, if that makes sense. This is when women are most responsive to the ketogenic diet, able to eat severely low carb or no carb with boundless energy. So think of right after you finish bleeding up until two days before you're ovulating, or if you don't have a period, up until two days before the full moon, you are eating a ketogenic diet, low carb, high fat, no carb ups, just like living your best life keto. Then we have cycle days 12 to 16. So this is two days before I'll just read it instead of explaining it two days before ovulation, ovulation itself and two days after ovulation, a woman's body still responds well to eating low carb during this phase, but you may benefit from a boost in gluten glutathione specifically in the evening. Food sources of glutathione include apples, avocados, broccoli, garlic, grapefruit, oranges, parsley, and tomatoes. You could also benefit from maintaining your usual keto macros for breakfast and lunch and then increasing your carbohydrate intake after 5 p.m. preferably with fruit. Do this each evening during these days of your cycle. Try it. It'll change your life. I love doing it. Okay, and then we have uh, cycle days 17 to 28. Now, this is the, really the last time in your cycle until you just repeat it all over again. Now, if you're joining us and you just jumped in, I see a bunch of people joining us, given all the hearts. I'm reading from my newest book, The Keto Diet Cookbook. It comes with about 70 pages of information before we get to recipes. So I just thought it would be super fun to read to you guys a couple times a week on this book and my upcoming Keto for Women book. If you guys want to get a copy, you can go to ketodietbook.com and check out all the ways that you can order. Okay, the last part of this is cycle days 17 to 28, the third day following ovulation through the day before you get your period. Your body will likely begin to crave carbohydrates as you approach the end of your cycle. You could benefit from maintaining your usual keto macros for breakfast and lunch and then increasing your carbohydrate intake after 5 p.m., preferably with starchy vegetables, so that's the difference, like cassava, plantains, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Do this each evening during these days of your cycle. Now, you don't have to do it each evening, but I like to say that just to kind of give you permission that if you want to do that, it's sort of like you can try it. So. What I like to say, because day 17 to 28, that's usually when you're retaining the most water and you're starting to get a little bit bloated and carb ups just add to that. So get a feel for how this works in your body. But this is the practice that I've been doing for the last two years. And I've practiced it with many of my clients and also with the members of Happy Keto Body, my 12 week video training program for women. And we're having a lot of success with it. So again, I'll show you this page, page 24 of the Keto Diet Cookbook.
Yeah. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them down below. I'd love to answer them. And I will be doing these events a couple times a week until the end of June. We can chat about all things hormones and keto. And when my book Keto for Women comes out in June, I'll be reading from that book as well. Yeah. So feel free to post your questions below. I will answer them. And also, if you're not like a hormones, keto information person, there are lots of recipes in this book as well. I'll show YouTube first. Tons of recipes, beautiful photos, if I do say so myself. I'm just so proud of this, baby. Yeah, so lots to choose from if you're not a recipe person. And for Instagram, I'll flip it around and give you a look while you send me all your questions. Boop, boop, boop. Totally awkward way of holding it. I guess I could have shown you guys at the same time. Hey, this is my first one. Give me a break. Back to today's episode in a sec. I thoroughly enjoy a good keto snack, and that should come as no surprise as many of the partners on the podcast are keto snacks. It's what most of us struggle with, how to pound back the fat when we're on the go. And that's why I love F-Bomb filled with high quality fats. Each single serve packet is keto friendly, no sugar, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free, peanut-free, and vegan, and they won't blow up in your purse like other packets that we've all tried. Just pure fats in an easy tear package. My personal favorite is their macadamia pecan butter. It's a real treat. Now, listeners of the show can get 20% off their very first order of F-bombs when you go to healthfulpursuit.com slash F-bomb and use the coupon code healthful for 20% off your first order. Again, that's healthfulpursuit.com slash F-bomb. Use the coupon code healthful, all in caps, for 20% off your first order. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out the show notes for all the details. Okay, back to today's episode. Okay, there was a question about menopause. And I did I did skip this last line. So in here it says menopause, women who are currently experiencing menopause or postmenopausal can typically follow a standard 80 15 5 ketogenic ratio. Yeah, so you could just eat keto forever, you don't need to worry about it. Now, if you're perimenopausal, your cycles are going to be a lot more drawn out. And so you can't necessarily follow the moon because you might be skipping cycles, there might be longer gaps, your period might be longer, shorter, your menstrual cycle might be 40 days, 50 days, 60 days. So just run with those days as like input those days into the cycle days. So say your period lasts one to eight days, then that first section would be cycle days one to eight, where you're eating more of a carnivore based diet. And then cycle days six to 11, yours might be because you don't ovulate until day 27, then you might be eating keto longer. So you're just stretching out the cycle periods to allow for the best balance of your hormones. Now, specifically for perimenopausal women, I like to always recommend that you really, really, really try to support your adrenals during this transition. Because as your ovaries stop producing hormones, your adrenals start. So it's really, really important that you support your adrenals, work to lower stress. I know how hard that is. Um, learn how to meditate, go to a yoga class, meet up with a girlfriend and do some Tai Chi, just anything that you can do to try to lower that stress and support your adrenals is going to be really, really important. Okay, so postmenopausal, menopausal women. Yes, thank you very much. I just didn't get to that point yet. So thanks for reminding me. Now, there's just a little line in the keto diet cookbook about menopause, but where I really, really go into menopause, postmenopause, perimenopause is in keto for women, where I've really delved deep on that. But for you, if you are postmenopausal, keto, you just eat keto, you don't have to bother with carb ups or anything, you can eat low carb, you don't need to worry too much. Now, that's assuming that everything else is okay. If you have a thyroid imbalance, for example, I have found that practicing carb ups can be really helpful for supporting your thyroid. So you might add carb ups in for that piece, but specifically talking about menopause, post menopause, you can eat keto, there's not much you need to change on a daily or weekly basis. Okay, cool. Any tips on how to start? I'm guessing you mean how to start keto? Yeah, go to the grocery store and get familiar with things that have a lot of carbs and things that don't have a lot of carbs. 
and then go to the produce section and look at different vegetables, do some research on what those vegetables are, how many carbohydrates there are, and just get familiar with how your shopping can be adjusted. Go through your pantry, look at things, just get familiar with what's in your pantry. And then I highly recommend getting a book and learning how to cook. Now, I think a lot of beginners can get overwhelmed by the fact that there's just so many options for support now. Like you can go to any bookstore or basically, a, I would guess over a hundred websites now and get support on keto. I would choose one resource and just use that for a month. Specifically, I'm talking about like cooking and meal planning. So if you like don't know how to cook all this keto stuff, choose one cookbook and follow that cookbook for a month so that you really get a sense of how the author or chef is preparing the meals, the different techniques they use, and you're actually building on your skills. I find when you're using all sorts of cookbooks and everything's frantic and you're picking from all different recipes or you're using some of those meal planning apps that pull from a bunch of different recipes on the internet, you're never really honing your skills. Because in one cookbook, there are, a, you know, like in my cookbook, there are a couple of not even skills. They're just like basic things that I do over and over and over. And once you get that, you get that and you understand it and you've learned it. And now you know how to cook like that. So I would say that that's something that a lot of us make the mistake of is just picking from a bunch of things and then getting super overwhelmed. Now, when it comes to like research on the ketogenic diet, I highly recommend spending a little bit of time researching a bunch of different things and learning about it and understanding your body a bit and reading books like mine, if you would like to, on different ways of looking at keto. I think it's really, really dangerous when we think that keto is only one way of eating because being in a ketogenic state is a state, just like being in a glucose burning state is a state. So it doesn't really make sense when people say there's only one way to do keto. Well, it's like, no, there's like thousands of ways to do glucose. So there has to be at least a handful, come on, of ways that you can get into ketosis and stay there. So just remind yourself that if you're not having success or you're feeling frustrated, that you may just need to tweak things and don't get discouraged. Swiss Keto Girl says, I ordered my copy on Monday. I can't wait till it arrives. I can't wait till it arrives for you as well. Um, if you already have a copy and you were just following along while I was reading, please go to ketodietbook.com slash review and leave your review for the book. Please, please, please do that. It helps other people find the book. It helps me feel great. <laughs> And, and helps me know whether or not I hit the mark with this book or didn't just leave an honest review. Whatever you'd like to leave, I'm happy with. And just helps me with future books and projects. You mentioned eating apples and potatoes to help during that part of your cycle. So that's all right, even though those are pretty high carb. Thanks. Travel corner. So yeah, because once you're in a ketogenic state, you can stay there quite easily. And if you're having a really hard time with your hormones, when you adjust to your ketogenic protocol and you're following it for maybe 60 days, 90 days, and you're still hitting a wall, it can be helpful to shift over. We're not talking about a lot. Like I was making a soup the other day and I literally had a potato this small and I just cut it up into pieces and put it in my bowl of soup. It's not that much and you can play around with this. If you've been keto for more than two weeks, preferably maybe 30 days, you can start to add carbs in this way strategically to help balance your hormones. And what should happen, now this isn't necessarily the case for anyone who might have insulin resistance or diabetes. Um, in my first book, which I have here, in my book here, I go through um, when you should be doing this carb up practice, when you shouldn't be. Gosh, this book is so heavy. It goes through all the different profiles that you can take and when to start. So if you're curious about like, why carbs? Why should I do this? How does it work when I'm first getting started? This is the book that you want to get. And then if you're like, how do I cook? How do I make this work for me? How do I meal plan? This is the book for you. Or you could just get both and then have all the things. And then while you're at it, pre-order keto for women. And then you're set. You have like literally all the things. Okay. Uh, let's see. Menopause tips. Country keto girl. Hey, from Bailey, Colorado. You are so awesome. And I love listening to your podcast. Thank you for all that you do. I cannot say how grateful I am for all the information you provide. Love you, girl. Oh, thanks, Country Keto Girl. You're the best. What type of food do I recommend for carb up? So I just reviewed cycle days 12 to 26. Food sources of glutathione include apples, avocados, broccoli, garlic, grapefruit, oranges, and a bunch of tomatoes. 
that can be super beneficial. And then when you go into cycle days 17 to 28, having things like cassava, plantains, potatoes, and sweet potatoes are really helpful for you during that time. I do a paleo keto lifestyle, no dairy for me. <laughs> me too. So many of you guys were really angry that my first book didn't have dairy. So what I did in my second book is that I included dairy, but also did everything dairy free. So I wonder if I can just like find a recipe where I've done this, or I could just explain it properly. I'm just going to explain it properly. So if a recipe calls for milk, I will tell you how to use regular milk, what to go for, and then also non-dairy milk and what your options are. If you don't do coconut, I've also listed coconut-free options for all the milk. Now, if you do cheese, I've listed how to use regular cheese and then how to use dairy-free cheese or how to make your own dairy-free cheese or how to just make it without cheese. <laughs> so there are lots of options. Sour cream, the same thing. Cream cheese, the same thing. So all the recipes can be made with dairy or without dairy. Also, butter versus ghee versus coconut oil versus avocado oil. If you like to use lard, I've included instructions in there to try, just try to make it as adaptable for everyone and what you need to do with your ketogenic diet. I just got mine while I was out of town working. Yay! Be sure to go to ketodietbook.com slash review to leave a review. Um, that just goes right to the Amazon page where you can leave a review. I had high blood glucose in a fasted state. Is that something to worry about? That I'm guessing real life, Meg, that could be because you're newer to keto. That sounds a lot like physiological insulin resistance. And that's quite normal. What happens in this state is that there are certain processes in your body that require glucose. And so your body knows this. So what it does is it keeps all the glucose out in your body ready for those processes that need it. And all the other organs will be like, no, nah, that's fine. I don't need it. I don't need it. So it'll stay out in your body. So over time, this should lower and it should go down. If you're concerned, though, I would definitely recommend chatting with your doctor about it and testing things more so. I keep checking nonstop on my Amazon account to see if it ships. I can't wait. Oh, great self. Thank you so much for pre-ordering. I bought your keto diet book and it's honestly the best one I have read and I have read many. Looking forward to your Keto for Women book. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, what do you think of pineapples as carb up? Somebody told me they're especially good to balance hormones. Yeah, I would include them in that third piece right after or right during your ovulation. So I'll show you again. Where did I just put that page? Cycle days 12 to 16. That's the one that I would include it in, the pineapple. I would love more information on cholesterol. Do any of your books discuss this? Yes. The Keto Diet, the original first book discusses cholesterol. And then Keto for Women also does. I don't have a copy yet, but should soonish. So just pretend I'm holding it up. But you can find out more about Keto for Women by going to ketoforwomen.com. Okay, guys, I've answered questions. We've hung out. I've read from my newest book. You guys can find out more by going to ketodietbook.com if you don't already have a copy. And if you do, please, please take 1.2 seconds to go to ketodietbook.com slash review to review the book. And bye, guys. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.